Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome everyone to our Keep Far Beautiful June monthly meeting. We may begin with roll call, please. Mari Caballero? Here. Romeo Robles Jr.? Romeo Cantu? Here. Marisa Oliva? Here. Rolando Perez? Jessica Trevino? Present. Laura De La Garza? Here. It is my understanding uh, Ms. Bernal uh, did get word from the two missing uh, board members uh, about their uh, absent so i'm gonna entertain a motion at this time on the floor uh for excusal of the members please so moved all right all right all opposed all all in favor aye since there's no opposition it motion passes we're going to move on to item 1b invocation decided to do a little little something different today i'd like to offer a summer blessing to all of you. May you walk with God this summer in whatever you do, wherever you go. Walk with honesty and with courage. Walk with love and respect, always for the feeling of others. May you talk to God this summer, pray words of praise, for the beauty all around, prayers of thanks for family, friends, and good times. May you walk and talk to God this summer. We move on to administrative item 2A, approval of minutes for our May 21st meeting. I need a motion on the on the floor to pass the, the minutes, please. I move that we approve the minutes of our last meeting. OK, we've got yes. one. All right. We have a second. OK, uh, Ms. Ms. Trevino. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Since there's no, no one opposed, uh, the motion passes. I'm um, very happy to go on to item 2B, introduction of our new board member, Ms. Jessica Trevino. Uh, I would. I'm going to give her the floor for a few minutes, uh, moments, so she can just introduce herself to to those of you out out there. Go ahead, Ms. Trevino. Hello, all. I see a lot of really familiar faces, and I'm so excited to see you guys again. Um, I had to write down a little bit of my introduction just because if I didn't, I would forget. A little. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. Um, it's such an honor to stand here with everyone as a newly appointed member. Um, I'm both humbled and really, really, really excited. I can't stop smiling. I finally get to be on the board um, to serve alongside um, such passionate and dedicated professionals and members of our community um, and also the rest of Team FAR. Like, I, I, I miss you guys so much. I couldn't stay away. It's been less than a year that I've been gone and I'm back. So I'm looking forward um, to the journey ahead and all that we will accomplish together. I can't wait to assist in fostering, you know, a sense of pride in this beautiful city. I love the city so much because it's not all about keeping it clean, clean and green, but it's also, you know, we want to be prideful of the city and we want to educate everybody, which that's, you know, the foundation of this committee, I think. Well, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. welcome. <laughs> We're real excited about Ms. Trevino. Um, she approached us um, and staff, and um, it appears she's been living the um, the, key, the clean, green, and beautiful life that we hope to um, convey to our citizens here. Uh, seems seems that as far back as probably before college, but I do know that in college, she, she spearheaded uh, re recycling in her, in her community. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, and on the second floor of this building. And too. <laughs> on the second floor of this building when she worked here. So um, we're, uh, we're very excited and uh, look forward to all her positive input. Uh, so welcome again. Thank you. Um, 
We go on to administrative item 2C, discussion on Keep Texas Beautiful 2024 upcoming events. So the big event coming up is our Keep Texas Beautiful uh, annual conference. It's called a conference for all Texans. Um, disappointingly, it is uh, going to be held online this year, but that's okay. That just means that more of us get to um, get to share in it and uh, what it all has to offer. So that conference is Monday, June 24th through Wednesday, June 26th. It is going to be again online. It is all those three days from 8.30 to 12.30. And I do wanna invite all of you to, um, it is going to be aired um, at bar one and we're gonna be hosted there. Uh, for any of you uh, out there, um, our departments that are here today that are interested in coming and, and viewing any part of the conference, uh, what we'll, we'll do is I will get with Ms. Bernal, the, our lovely administrative assistant from Parks and Rec, who sends, it, who sends out the email invite to our departments here to come to, the, to these monthly meetings. I will get with Cindy because I've been made aware now that the conference does have their agenda. Uh, now they finally made it available because it had not been available. So what we'll do is we'll make that available to the departments that come here today, that come here to this meeting. And that way you're able to see um, the uh, topics that are going to be discussed and see if there's anything there that you may find interesting and you may want to sit in. So again, uh, we're going to be hosted at FAR1. Um, when Ms. Uh, Ms. Castro comes forth uh, in a bit. She can expand on that and, and explain the room or the, the area there. And FAR 1 is our location up on in North FAR on um, 1121 East Nolana Loop. So again, um, expect an email uh, no later than this week from us, uh, from Ms. Bernal and with Parks and Recreation, and uh, she will be, look look for that. Uh, it'll be the uh, schedule of the agenda for the conference. All the topics are gonna be discussed. Um, and with that, I'm gonna move on to administrative item 2D, discussion on Keep Our Beautiful 2024 project. So I guess I would like to ask Ms. Castro to come up. She's been working on, on, on something for us, um, good evening, everyone. It's nice to see you all um, here. Um, so I have been uh, actively working on a project. Uh, it's a standpipe beautification project. Um, our deadline for artwork entries was June 14th, and I'm happy to announce that we're halfway there. I I wasn't sure we would receive all the, um, you know, uh, entries, but so far we've received half and um, we are getting things underway. Um, last, last month I had mentioned that perhaps we could go ahead and vote on, since it is a contest between city departments, that we could vote um, and maybe announce the um, winner at the July 4th festival. I don't know that we'd be able to do that because I know for certain that we the standpipes will not be completed by that time. So I guess we'll just need to make some decisions on how we're gonna go about doing that. Um, I didn't make a PowerPoint presentation for you purposely because I didn't feel that it would be appropriate for us to show what's been turned in and I haven't received all the artwork. So I, I, I do have um, some samples. They're not the best printed quality, but um, if you're interested in maybe seeing what you know departments have turned in, you're more than welcome to, um, I can share those with you all um, individually and, um, and then we can uh, vote at a different time since we don't have all the submissions. But um, so we are underway. Uh, I did contact our our working vendor and um, submitted the artwork that I have received thus far. Um, some departments turned in multiple um, 
choices, you know, and they said, oh, Cindy, you pick. I was like, no, this is not my call, but thank you for, for trusting me. I'm going to throw it back at you and say, you know, out of the four, which one would you, which one represents your department best? And so I got some really good responses and some decisions were made. Um, and it was only like three different departments that were having trouble choosing or picking which one um, was. It's a, it was harder than I thought. You know, if, even in our, in our department, we were like, you know, there's so many of us. How do we make a decision? So it was interesting how that panned out. And that was part of the purpose of why we did this in collaboration so that we can all work together and um, decide accordingly, you know, and make those type of decisions as a group. And so it's been fun. A lot of work, but it's been it's been a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to um, what the standpipes will look like and the representation from all of the different departments. Um, and so I, I don't know if you all have any questions for me. What I'd so like far. to do is, mm -hmm. is, is before we open it up to, to questions, if you could just brief for our new board member. Sure. Um, the, the concept is not painting and right. that and um, also sure. mm -hmm. given that this is a contest yes and we didn't want to hold the departments uh accountable for their lack of artistry or art art you know that yes. there weren't artists yeah. so if you could kind of so when we started this process um we thought about wanting to do something different from what's already out there in the areas of, of the valley. Um, and so we came up with an idea and we thought that um, a vinyl art wrap would be appropriate. They're very popular right now. So we did some research and um, contacted several different vendors and we came up with that idea and solidified that um, and turned it into this actual project. So what the prompt was, or um, the prompt that I posed for all the departments was um, that they needed to come up with an idea that represents their department. Um, try not to use words and things of that nature. So just something that's representative of, represents the department that you work in. And um, some people, you know, found it very easy to do and others not so much. Um, I didn't give any very specific information as to what type of artwork would be um, accepted, except I did give them some guidelines. Like it can be a photo, it can be a drawing, it can be AI generated. You know, it's just the idea behind what you think represents you in your department. That's basically what it was. And um, yeah, we've got some really exciting entries. I was very pleased to to see some of the things that, you know, the departments came up with it's amazing and you know the best part about the material the best part of the material is that it is recyclable material we will be using recyclable material and i even went a step further i thought okay if we don't find recyclable material we are looking at different ways that we can incorporate that that um vinyl or that artwork into a different project once we decide, you know what, we're ready to kick off a second phase or maybe give it, I think the lifespan of, of this project, we were anticipating it being two to three years and maybe starting another art contest at a later time, you know, maybe a, a community wide, perhaps something, something of that nature. And so, you know, we're excited to come up with different ideas and, you know, being a part of this group, it just kind of, you know, encourages you to, or it challenges challenges me anyway, um, how can we incorporate this into different things? And so I remember, um, I think Mr. Cantu at one time mentioned that there was something going on at the library and we're still trying to connect those dots. Like, well, how did you find out? And, you know, um, we're still trying to, to get um, all of that information to make sure that we participate in those activities as well. And when he brought that up, I, we reached out to um, the vendor that was, not the vendor, but the artist that was there that recreates um, recyclable projects with you know, different types of um, materials from artwork that has been previously used. And I don't know if you'd want to share anything yeah. about that experience with you her. You attended but, that event. Yes. Yeah, it was during the, uh, 
April Earth Day. Earth Day. Earth Day. Yes. Earth Day. It was a program. Like, what was it called? New. <laughs> New, it, new use, new, or new, new, new reuse, new reuse. It's, it's a really long name, but yes. Well, we, basically, you know, a lot of people have crafts. <laughs> they're getting rid of crafts in their homes, or they have, yeah. you know, wrappers from, you know, uh, free delay bags or whatever they had left over. And the kids that day, they, they were creating little robots. And we showed the picture. We showed the sideshow mm -hmm. that was in here. So I thought, it was, what a cool little project of something that's recycled, reused, and the kids are reusing it for a project. They get to take it home, and they see from it from that. So. When we were coming up with this idea for the sound pipe, it was like, okay, we make sure that somehow it's recyclable, reusable, and we wanted to do something that was different that no other city and actually no other place in the valley that I know of, well, I know the valley, maybe even the state that has this, what we're going to be doing. And it doesn't limit you to having to just use the paint. It limits you to your mind, which is basically if you can computer uh, use it on a computer to generate your idea. Uh, or if you, if you have a student that does draw it, okay, mm -hmm. then draw it. And then you make a digital copy of it mm -hmm. and make it into a picture or whatever. And all of it's going to have our branding, which I like, because it has a city yes. branding and it has the Keep Our Beautiful branding on it. So you'll be able to see these all around and it's a quick way of doing it. And it's a great competition. I thought that was mm -hmm. a great idea to kind of involve all the departments here within the city of Forest. I thought that was fantastic. Any questions for Ms. Castro? Congratulations. Thank you. I know you've been working on this. I, I have. It's been yeah, fun. Just, it's been a lot of fun. Um, I don't know if you wanted me to touch um, on the oh, yes. um, on the conference yes, coming please. up. Okay, so we do have a reservation at the beautiful um, FAR1 facility meeting room. Um, I would just uh, encourage you to maybe let me know. It doesn't have to be right now. It is three days, the 24th through the 26th in the morning. As, um, as was mentioned earlier, from 8.30 to 12.30. So we'll have a room reserved. We'll have goodies there. We'll have drinks available as well. Um, and if you are available, please join us. If not, then um, that's okay. That I know that it will be broadcast or it'll be available online at a later time if you're not able to attend. So um, if you uh, can let me know if you'll be there, that way we'll know. Yes, ma'am. So I'm looking on the website and it it shows just breakout sessions. It doesn't show what they are. Mm -hmm. Hit the breakout session part. It should take you to the list. Um, oh, not on oh, mine. Not on yours. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. So that's why I was going to ask if we could get the actual. Yes, session. and that's what we're we're going to work on. Make sure that we get that out to you all to see which ones you are interested in being a part of, and that way we'll get a good count as to how many people will will be attending to make sure that we've got enough space. Um, in that room for, for everyone that's attending. Um, one of the key things here is um, they do bring, they do bring best practices to, to yes. share their projects mm -hmm. and their, what's working and, you know, what is, what has been working with it for them. Well, one of the beauty, beautiful things is they actually will, sh you'll get to see the winners of that wonderful grant that we've been trying to, that we're buying for. And you'll get to understand what I've been saying is, we're all, you're, if you see what they're doing, you're like, well, we're doing that too, but I see the spin. I see what they're doing. Yeah. They're taking it outside the box. They're adding this, they're being creative. They're doing that. Um, but I, the best way to do it is to actually see mm -hmm. the winning entries for each population group what got them first? What granted them that that money? Mm -hmm. And it's again, it's a partnership. Um, it is funded by TechStop, and it's a great deal of money. Um, and it's per we buy with only cities that are our population group. Uh, but it is it's fascinating to see to see that. And they'll be on the calendar on that mm -hmm. schedule of events. We'll there'll be a point where they award those awards out mm -hmm. and they will give you they actually come out to the location to the city and they do a three to five minute video yes. and they show you this is what this this is why they want they this is what they're doing this is this was in you know ingenious or this project this is what they decided to do and the spin they gave it and and stuff because we're all meeting the the pillars that that are required so all right, enough. Um, sorry.
Any more questions for Ms. Gossett? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Gossett. Thank you. All right. Um, we move on to administrative item 2E. Uh, we're, uh, updates from building and code compliance, please. Good afternoon, committee. My name is Rick Gamboa, City of Far, Code, uh, code Compliance Coordinator. And I'm uh, David Cantillo, Code Compliance Coordinator. Good afternoon, uh, committee. I got a couple of, uh, of sadly, but I uh, guess we can re postpone our, our June 20th uh, block party due to inclement weather. So hopefully we're planning, hopefully next week, uh, we can get back on it and uh, hopefully the weather will clear out and help us out with that. But there, there was a big plan uh, on, on, on this party, but we're, yeah. we still got everything uh, that we're, we purchased. We're hoping by next week, uh, again, it's uh, the one at Citrus Bay, folks, okay? So it'll be rescheduled. Then. Yes, sir. Could, uh, could you let Ms. Bernal know the new date whenever we're, we're you do have it, it yes. and then she could email the committee? Yes, Would that be yes. okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. The second uh, uh, item is on, pro it's a property maintenance assistance program that we had this uh, this weekend. Again, because do it because of the weather, we're having our contractors uh, do the cutting for us. And there was a five, five uh, cuts that we did. The addresses were 746 North Date, 2208 uh, Yellowfin, 623 West Caffrey, right down the road, 711 West uh, Eagle, and 7201 South Mariposa. Okay, we still have a lot of applications. Uh, what's happening right now is on the applications, a lot of people uh, are are so in love with their property. We tell them we're gonna be doing the cuts. We go out there, they just finish cutting them. So that's a dilemma that we're having right now. They want it all nice and and uh, and flat. They don't like it. They don't like it like that, like in the lawnmower. They don't like their property to be looked like that at all. We tell them we're gonna go, by the time we go, it's already nicely trimmed and cut. So that's, uh, but we still have a lot of applications. We have okay. about, 67 so we're we're still trying to double up on on even if we have to come in and do it in dome in sure, the morning sure, and uh sure. do three and three and three and three and, but a lot of times like i said they're not ready the properties right. are not ready they're so not we just ready. need to flip them over yeah. and first come first serve and but i have a question it's a lot of properties it, what is the impetus for people asking for help is it because they're elderly and they're unable to cut the grass or is it that they lack the equipment to do it i think it's both okay. uh a lot of times the elderly uh because remember this disqualifies you if you have a sibling in the house that's uh that's uh, young capable of cutting the yard they don't qualify uh but yes i think it's both uh the elderly live by themselves they don't have any means of, of the equipment and uh so I don't, this is something that's done in other cities. I don't know if it's something the city of FAR would consider, uh, but the equipment can be expensive. And, you know, and some people don't know how to repair equipment when it breaks down. And I've had that problem myself, just trying to find somebody to repair it up to buy a new machine. Um, some cities provide a loaning library of equipment. And I'm wondering if that would help with the issue where, for those that can do it, but just don't have it, I don't know if that's something a city might consider in the future. Uh, I live in McAllen. They have that program, but I think the ones that are able and willing to do it have the equipment. I think it's here in the city of Far. It's affecting the elderly, the okay. over sixty-five. That's why the only uh, the only uh, classification that we're getting now is military. Military, they're not disabled. They're just or, or they're not old. They can do it, but they want us to do it either uh, disability of. I know there's certain disabilities that you get in the military, but they're they're we request they're younger individuals, but we're we're getting the military uh, personnel in, involved in this. But yes, ma'am, uh, I know McAllen has a equipment rental. Okay. Here, nobody's called us for that. I know they've called us from other adjoining cities, saying that if we do it at their cities, we don't. We're far as the only one right. at this moment. Okay. Any questions? The plaque assistance, guys, oh, it's yes. going crazy. Oh. This one's going, I think it's going beyond our, our property maintenance. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we're trying to schedule it. We're, we're already in our eighth batch, I think. Uh, we're trying to organize it better so I could give you more uh, 
more information on that, more uh, more accurate information. But 31 plaques were installed in the month of May, and we're still accepting applications. I think uh, within the past, uh, I think he had, uh, he's up down to, I think about eight that are left from the badge that remain. We, I went and paid for the 75 at the, at the business place that we ordered it, but we they're not ready yet, but we're waiting for 75 more. That's amazing. And remember, those are for elderly, disabled, and the military. The military come to their own logo of military that they served in. Okay. So if there were Army, it'll have the Army? Yes, ma'am. Or Navy? Wow, that's, that's awesome. That is awesome. So, so what's good about this is that QR code, I don't know who came up with that, but it's the best thing that ever happened because we never got a, a such an enormous demand without that code. If it wasn't because of that code, I don't know. I mean, we wouldn't have had that many solicitations on the, that, that's being. Wrote. We have, we have that one. We have the property maintenance, and we have the, the permits, which I'm going to get to, uh, on the permit, uh, building guys. It's uh, we've had within the past uh, months, we've had 51 cases of residents building without a permit. They're all building and not notifying. Uh, they're not notifying us, so. Thanks to the neighbors, neighbors calling in, complaining. They, they're hitting my fence. They're making this noise at night. A lot of people building without permits. So we want to let that out, let people know. It's an easy application. It's got a QR code also. Uh, all they need to, I think a lot of people are taking it wrong because they think that if they apply for a permit, their taxes are going to go high. That That's not the point at all. The only time you get uh, a tax increase is if you ask for a survey. On your property and they see that you got additions in, in that property that's when the taxes go up but i just want to let the people know that it's not it, it's, it's not, not nothing related. having to do with yeah. taxes okay i've and, heard that officer gomboa a yes, lot people are like oh i've heard that a lot of people say i'm like why do you say that and they're like because they say oh, they well, took them off. you know why not. they say that because when well at least in spi when you ask for a permit on a residence the city will provide the permit to the builder and we'll send a copy of that to the CAD, oh, okay. to the Cameron okay. County Appraisal District. Oh, oh, wow. this one. And so then like someone like me who wasn't renovating, but my neighbor used, or rather the city used my address and my legal on their permit and it got recorded at Cameron County CAD. Oh, then yes. my insurance, my new insurance was researching through CAD to see if my building was actually a standing building that I was insuring. And it came up that it was being renovated. Whoa. So I was getting my insurance Maybe dropped. Maybe that's where they're getting My insurance from. was getting dropped. It wasn't me. I, I will say I recently had my air condition unit replaced. And I was having some of the vendors I was getting quotes from telling me that a permit wasn't needed. So I had checked and I found out that it was. Yes. And so I am so I don't know if there's a, not only for the, the individuals, but for the contractors that folks are working with to do the AC and electrical Maybe they there was a way to educate them as well. But yes, ma'am, and, and usually the air conditioners usually not a, a biggie, but yes, they do need a mechanical permit to install, mm -hmm. and it's only for the safety of the resident mm -hmm. because you get somebody else out there and doesn't do a good job. That's that's basically the most important reason for a permit, just so you can get somebody that's qualified. So there's like renovation permits, mechanical permits, electrical permits. Yeah, the uh, the biggest notice. the biggest ones is uh, like the building without a permit construction yeah. additions and the electrical and plumbing those three the like for a fence like if they're putting up a fence or they're fixing a fence that's one yes ma'am yes, yes ma'am that's one of the most economical permits okay. wow that's amazing we learned a lot <laughs> it's good to know just to, to, to spread the word that yes ma'am thank you uh and 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 just because we have to take him to court uh to get that issue uh Re remedied so oh, that's the only yeah. thing we don't want to do that but most of them comply and come yeah. and uh, obtain their permit now imagine me dealing with this at the end of may <laughs> and june 1st yes. hurricane season starts and not having insurance oh. it was it was challenging trying wow. to take care of trying to get it all straightened out but it did let me ask you sir all this all these uh uh flyers with the scan codes where are they found? Are we they... have them in the front desk okay. where the permit department's at, and we also have them whenever we have our uh, our far night outs or any we event that available. we have, we have them all there. Yes, And I, I know you do the far night outs, and when you have the block parties, you probably have those available. 
And then maybe do they put them in, I'm sorry, do they put them in our water bill or, or you haven't seen that yet? I was just going to mention that yes. whenever we come upon this, we also, I usually tend to give them one to let them it. see and, and understand why we're stopping them from what they're doing. Okay, very good. Very good. Okay. I would love to share some of those with the community. And if you all want to, if you send them to me, I can get them printed at work and then we can put them out because they oh, have yeah. a bulletin board there at work. Where That'd be great. And I, a lot of people yeah. from far come in. I was going to bring that one for the permits yeah. and stuff and I, I forgot it, but uh, yes, ma'am, that's great. That'd sure. be great. Do, do you post them like at Home Depot and some of the other McCoy's, like the city? The, or, I mean, that we, might we, be a neat We, we can. It's a good idea. Might yeah. Be yeah. <laughs> so, they, so they're like cash and carry. <laughs> yeah, you can't see. I don't yeah, all, the, all the construction <laughs> areas, yeah. You know, because, uh, yeah, guys, the, the biggest thing, it. the biggest thing that we've gotten every time we go out there, uh, we approach the citizen and, uh, yes, ma'am, we're here uh, because uh, I know I see you're building something. Can I see your permit? Uh, the contractor told me I didn't need one. So guess what? He says, can you uh, let them know? Because it's it, he was the one that, it's the residents, the, the homeowners' it's responsibility. The, it's the property so. owners' responsibility. Oh, I thought the contract, because our contractor got the permit. No, you can get, well, the contractor can get it and do everything for you, but, oh. but a lot of contractors say, no, you do not need the permit. You, don't, you know, don't, don't do believe that. They got to call the, the permit department and, and they'll take care of it. They're, they'll tell you right away. Almost everything, uh, a permit's required for almost everything. Yeah. So the, the, and we got the we got the QR code. We got the web the, on 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 the online buildingfar.com is also a real popular one where you can go and, and get the the permit. And also the cases for the June June tenth to the fourteenth, we didn't include our health uh, our health inspections, but uh, we did just three new ones. But there was about uh, thirty six health inspections that we did for that first month. We do the health inspections from uh, uh, week one of every month. Wow. Okay. Um, 41 proactive uh, cases, 22 complaints, 101 follow-ups, a total of 73 cases for uh, so far for this month. So, and uh, the last but not least, I just want you guys to see, we just had a PSA for the storm coming up. Oh, yes. And I think our, our officers did an excellent job uh, educating the people in Spanish and English uh, here. So you can view that uh, PSA. I think it was awesome. Mm -hmm. With potential rains and storms coming to the valley, uh, residents can go in and maintain their properties, uh, making sure that their outdoor furniture is secured. If there's potential floodings, um, those objects might flow into the drainage, obstruct the drainage flow, and cause flooding even to be worse. So we do recommend residents to go in and clear out any stagnant water after storms. Only reason is because it harvests mosquito larvae, which is the reproduction of mosquitoes. When it comes to it, there's a bacteria that's in the water, and it's just for the protection of your own kids to make sure they don't get sick. Durante esta temporada de huracanes queremos recordar a los residentes lo importante, verdad, que es de mantener sus propiedades limpias. ¿A qué nos referimos con esto? Si es que tienen artículos sueltos, sillas, comedores o herramienta, les recomendamos que por favor los guarden en sus lugares respectivos. Si el pasto está alto y deciden cortarlo antes de, de, de que vengan las lluvias o el huracán, les pedimos que por favor recojan todo el césped cortado y ponerlo en botes de basura. Muchas veces el agua que viene con las tormentas tiende a ser agua estancada o agua del drenaje. Esta agua tiende a tener muchas bacterias, muchas enfermedades. Queremos evitar que los niños a jugar con ellas se enfermen y propaguen enfermedades al resto de la familia. Si los residentes ven agua estancada en recipientes, es importante que se deshagan de ella, porque esta agua puede permitir la propagación de mosquitos o otros animales que propagan enfermedades. If anyone does have any questions in regards to keeping their property maintained uh, prior to storms, um, they can always contact the Code Compliance Division at 956-402-CODE um, or 956-402-2633. So that was last Friday, so I think that's that was all. aired on uh, the, the YouTube and our social media. Yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, we try to be out there. City yes, of our channel. Very good. Very so, good. Any questions, Does folks? Anybody, with uh, anybody have any questions? No, I just I don't know who's doing the design of the flyers, but they're excellent. <laughs> uh, me media's our our best friend. Yeah. Media. Uh, media. <laughs> media. Yes. Yes. They have Perks to Media because they, they we we send them something and they fix it all up for us. Uh, also, that project that uh, 
you're talking about on the sandpipe. I just didn't like our location, but I thought I had perks because it's I'm in a committee, but <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't like my location. But... I love it. Yeah, well, thank any, you, any sir, questions? again, um, just one more thing, because I know Ms. De La Garza asked uh, for flyers. You said, is there a site? I need uh, uh, your information. Okay, and she, he can email it to you. Is there a site online right now where those flyers are located? Uh, is it the I'm city? not sure. Okay. But well, I'm, I'm going to give you my card so you can send me an email and, okay, and then we That's can. Perfect. Okay. okay. Thank you, very folks. Good. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you Mr. Gantu, Mr. Board. Gamboa. Appreciate it. Uh, we move on to, we continue with administrative item 2E. Uh, we move on to public health department. Good evening, everyone, Madam Chair, members of the uh, committee. Um, I was conflicted on what picture to share, um, but I I ended up choosing this one because uh, we have one of your board members there. And uh, uh, what I'm going to talk about is uh, the uh, grant that we received for um, the forestry in, in the schools. And so before we were so graciously invited by uh, member Marisa Oliva to attend the um, uh, Children and Nature Conference in, in Wisconsin, in um, Madison, Wisconsin. Um, I had a different idea or concept of what this uh, grant was going to be. Uh, and for members that were not here previously, this is a $3.12 million that we just recently received from Texas A&M. And so uh, before that, me and, and the staff uh, that went uh, to the conference, uh, we had, um, you know, we were excited because we were going to have parks in the schools, you know, uh, with more trees and the increase of canopy. But it was an, an amazing experience. It was my first time uh, in, in um, such um, an event. And it was great to share uh, uh, ideas and, and uh, to bounce you know, to to see everyone on the same same page bouncing off um, events and, and things that they do in other areas. So first of all, we visited um, the uh, uh, three schools in Milwaukee. And so those three schools were at different stages of uh, similar grants and similar funding that they've had in the past. So we got to see schools that have had these, um, these uh, green playgrounds uh, for one year, for uh, three years, and five years. And so we saw different stages. We got to hear the experiences of um, these uh, principals and uh, the people that were involved in the planning and the implementation of, of these programs. And so my husband is joking that I came back hugging trees and taking off my shoes to ground myself uh, all the time. And uh, But it, it, it was an honestly uh, great experience. And so uh, it's going to be four city of far schools are going to receive this this uh, this uh, beautiful uh, green areas, and so I'm excited because it obviously uh, adds to the beauty of the city, and also um, something that I've been uh, be, I, that I have been drilled about in the past few few weeks is the effect that it will have on the uh, heat island effect, the urban heat island effect, and uh, our climate and, and all of that. But moreover, I think uh, it's going to be a wonderful experience because we're sharing with the with a birthing center in, in McAllen and uh, in other uh, places here in the Valley. So we want to see if we can be a catalyst for, you know, the, the, the whole Valley to continue with this effort. Uh, when we travel to other places, uh, for example, close by Austin, uh, you know, there are trees everywhere. Obviously, they've started a long time ago. And so um, I'm very excited that we will be able to do this together. And so uh, Children and, Net and um, in, in Nature Network locally um, are, um, are going to be very involved. Uh, we are right now waiting for PSJA to uh, get their bearings um, going because of graduations. Uh, they just finished last week, you know, they're, this uh, week they're closing all of their last things for the school year. And next week we're going to come together and start planning um, the uh, Texas A&M uh, Forestry, uh, Community Forestry uh, Department has said that we can move forward with the plans. And so we really want to bring them on board and all of you 
uh, with ideas and and um, you know and how to implement this. And so we're excited. That's uh, one of the things that that we that that I bring you today. Uh, it's the only one. But uh, if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions or you know anything that you'd like to 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 add, we're welcome to to that. And then we did turn in our poster supporting other departments. Oh, good, 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 good. So, uh, Cynthia, can you share with the committee what the parameters are for the grant? Like, um, what what components are going to be part of this grant? So, um, part of uh, this uh, conference that we went to, we were able to go outdoors and uh, sit down with a team. Uh, there were different teams, and uh, we used different materials to plan uh, the areas for this uh, green playground. So, it's not just uh, um, uh, going out there and putting a bunch of trees and a bunch of benches and 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 call it a day. So it's very strategically planned. It has areas that are going to transition children from one to the other one seamlessly. And so one of the 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 things that they're recommending is to use as many natural materials as possible. So we got to see a lot of playgrounds that have. Uh, tree trunks and and boulders and stones and a lot out of dirt and and wood and and you know that invite children uh, and that that bring them closer to nature um, and and so some of the areas or components of these playgrounds are an area for um, uh, fine motor skills an area for gross motor skills for uh, decompressing for mental health. Uh, for children uh, and adults that uh, want to to disconnect and 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 play separately, so um, is that what you were? Uh... I think you had shared with me, and I want to make sure everybody heard that. Like the grant, the the grant that you received, I think thirty percent of the ground had to be covered with canopy, and then correct. There's curriculum, so I, that's what I was talking about. Those. Okay, so with uh with the grant specifically, um, it, it, like any other grant, it already had uh, requirements. So it, uh, we didn't go around choosing schools that uh, were uh, my, my friends or anybody's friends or because I like that one better because it's in my neighborhood. So they had um, specific areas, measurements that the schools needed to have. Schools, high schools were um, from the, from the get-go not included. Uh, we feel that it's probably because they, they think that uh, small children and middle schoolers are more uh, prone to go out outside and you take uh, advantage of these uh, outdoor classrooms that you know they can be used as classrooms and so that was one thing so but the major purpose of this grant is to increase the tree canopy in those schools by 30 percent and so that's uh, as you all know um, the shade of uh, of trees by 30 percent um, another requirement was the amount of um, of land that was not used had a specific measurement and then at least at least 25 percent of that uh, needed to be used for uh this this uh green areas um and and i think that's basically um those are basically the uh, the requirements uh the other ones once it's implemented uh, native trees um that um there's uh specific uh areas that like I mentioned, that 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 you're supposed to have to tackle uh, curriculum because it's supposed to be tied to eventually, obviously, the TEKS. Uh, and we had to submit, uh, and that's when PSJA uh, came in. We had to submit uh, with the plan, the um, uh, not the specific curriculum, but how we were going to tie it to sustainability and to the TEKS for academics uh, because it has all those components, and so it's also. Uh, going to be available for the community uh, in the evening or the weekends. So yes. No, I, 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 oh. that's, that's, no I was like, oh wow. That's, yes. That's and so, um, so it it's it's going to serve many purposes. It's going to um, act as a classroom, which I have to do a quick pause here and tell you that I was fortunate to go to the uh, Arnold Leopold. Uh, um, uh, National Park, and I learned that he is a father of urban ecology, and uh, and I also got uh, we were fortunate enough to sneak kind of into a school that it's a preschool that is not using any academics and it's not using curriculum. 
It's unstructured play for children that, that gives them uh, opportunities for learning. And so we got to see uh, these areas uh, where these uh, small children uh, were, even though it's not structured, it was very strategic. Their, their play was very, uh, amongst themselves, very planned. And, and, and it's true, you can see the transitions and how the children move from one log running on top of the log to uh, the kitchen. And then they go and get, uh, they had a well and get water. And so it was beautiful to watch. And um, there's a lot of research um, about how these children that are not being pushed ABCs and and uh, you know the the um, the usual curriculum still when they get they get to uh, to elementary they're able to catch up fast but th what they have noticed in the research is that these children are uh, better capable at dealing with uh, uh, their emotions and anxiety they're like less anxious they're more mature they're able to uh, they have more self control. Uh, focused. And so it has a lot of benefits because um, what the research says is that these children are focusing at the age that's important on developing all of these other areas that are necessary before we start trying to, you know, to to teach them um, uh, the ABCs and, and all of that. And so it was very interesting. And at the same time, when I was talking about uh, that and the grounding, um, when you are out there and they're talking about grounding and then we take off uh, our shoes it's you're kind of nervous because we have walked away from all of that you know you take off your shoes you get on the grass and 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 it's it's uh, uh you're a little bit nervous um on on doing that and it's the same thing watching these children in, and and hearing that no curriculum and you you think well will they ever really catch up and and so all of this research shows that when you expose ch children to nature, to um, uh, healthy lifestyles, you know their their mental their their mental capacity, their brain capacity, their health is uh, is is at an advantage compared to children who are streamlined. And so, very interesting yes. uh, things that you know that some districts could you know think about implementing. You know, even the city of far and so, so so just to clarify so this was a nature preschool at the uh, aldo leopold nature center which mm -hmm. is at the site of aldo leopold who had who wrote the sand county almanac and um it was a beautiful preschool and yes we got to sneak in and see the kids and talk to all the teachers and the um, um the uh, director there and the other the other part is these are not plastic and metal uh playgrounds this is, it reminded me growing up, going to El Rancho con los abuelitos, uh, where there was dirt everywhere. And, uh, you know, the, the little kitchen, it was not a uh, little tykes uh, Barbie type of deal. It, it's just a, a bunch of wood put together, you know, in a little table. And the kids were going back and forth. And, and so it, it does uh, provide them many opportunities for learning. There was a teepee made out of branches, you know, all kinds of uh, uh, um, recycled materials. There was this big, huge pipe where the children play under uh, uh, as a tunnel and then over. And, and so we saw children running, jumping back and forth. And, and, and it was, it was very inspiring. And, and, uh, and that's why I'm saying I'm coming back and along with the staff that, that went with a totally different mindset of what we can make for, for the four schools in, in far and the other, um, neighboring cities. Uh, what schools were selected to be, I guess, the guinea pigs in this? There's, uh, um, I, it's Liberty, Arnold. Uh, I don't remember the other two, but I can email you uh, all of the, um, the, the schools. Uh, and the reason I don't remember is because we've been very active in applying for other grants for the past few weeks. And, uh, and, and so uh, we're waiting until next week to touch base, to sit down with, uh, with an, um, the, landscape, the landscape architect or an engineer that's going to be working on the plans. And uh, we're also uh, working with Ms. Marisa in the next few uh, weeks on a uh, developing a um, job description for uh, the four positions that are going to be hired to oversee two schools each, because we want to make sure that we hear recommendations from people that 
that have been hugging trees for a long time and that know people that that are uh, subject matter experts and can help us make decisions, but more importantly, that can oversee the project and that can make sure that for two schools, they they have all of the things that the plans uh, portray and, and we don't deviate from that unless it's necessary. So, so. so but before you go on, I'm sorry, Ms. Trevino, um, Marisa Oliva is uh, with uh, Children and Nature Network and we just so blessed that she lives in the city of Far and sits on our committee as well. So. Correct. And uh, and I'm going to put it out there for the world to hear. I think it would be a great idea for uh, staff that present here uh, from the city to attend this this meetings. You know, because I I, I can tell you, my husband. Uh, you know, about three days ago, I told him, "Hey, do we still have bikes?" He said, "We haven't biked in like 15 years." I was like, "Well, we." We need to get our bikes out and, and go to the Santana Refuge. We used to go many day, many years ago. And so uh, I think it, it would be great if every year I know that there's a nature and, and, and uh, children in, na in nature conference coming up and and start sending our staff to especially the ones that that come for uh, before you uh, to bring ideas. And like you said, um, use utilize those uh, the things that we learn for your grants for you know all other activities and and to implement here so yeah, i agree do you have any questions for dr gutierrez thank you so much everyone have a great evening no, thank, you. thank you that was amazing oh, thank, thank you. you thank you okay um we go on then we continue with administrative item 2e uh parks and recreation i'm not sure miss castro if you have anything else to add okay i think that was all okay so then we're going to go on we're going to continue administrative item 2e and finish with public works and i i know you have a couple of guests that you want to bring up so you yes. you'd be happy to whatever point you want okay so i'm going to start off with uh, my report for the month of may mm -hmm. um good evening members of the committee irma diaz here to present the uh, report for the month of May. So we had a total of recyclables for the month of 34.35 tons, yeah. and we collected 2,039 tires. Um, the total recyclable revenue was $6,490.41, uh, and the scrap tire revenue was $2,506.06. Um, at our RCS station, we collected a total of 42.51 tons of bulky items. And um, the total revenue was $1,715.04. Um, so for um, the last month, we did have our trash bash at uh, Joe's uh, Fox Park, and we collected 215 tires and a total of uh, 6.41 tons of bulky items okay, for the month. Um, That's in one day. Yes, That's in one in day. One day. Awesome. <laughs> sorry, I'm still, those numbers always <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm sorry, it amazes me. Just amazes me. The best part is that they're not gonna be they're, in the watershed. That's, that's right. the yes. best part. That's right. <laughs> they won't be in the watershed and they won't I'm be. I'm sorry. <laughs> do, you, do you have dates yeah. for the upcoming trash bashes? Yes. So our next trash bash is going to be on the 29th of June. And this one will be at the RCS. And it's gonna be from 8 to 12. What's the RC, uh, recycling the, center? Yeah, the, uh, the residential collection station oh, okay. on Mako. Mm -hmm. You said, I'm sorry, the 29th? Yes, the 29th. Back over at, um, uh, yeah. Do you ever have a trash bash over at the, um, uh, oh gosh, Parks and Rec? Um, oh, you're at Pepe Salinas? At Pepe Salinas? No, we only have it at the RCS and at uh, Joe's. Joe's okay. Box. I guess that would be central. Cent yeah. yeah, that would be an idea. It's, it's I guess, just an idea. It's, it's a central, it's centrally yeah. located. Yeah, um, that, would, that would be. Just an idea. Um, wow. So for the month, we did have a field trip. Okay. Um, Valley View Elementary went out there, uh, third graders, and we did a we gave them a tour and educated them on the importance of recycling. 
Um, and um, we also had an educational booth at LPJ Middle School where they had the STEM and career pathway. Uh, so we educated about 200 kids from kinder to 12th grade. That's we were out there. And um, that was all for the month of May. Okay, you were busy. Yes. <laughs> and now I want to introduce Valeria Fonseca. I have a quick question. Yes. There was a paint recycling. Was, yes. was that the 26th? Or now that's been moved to the 29th? Uh, for the trash bash is the 29th. And that's yeah, where you can for, put paint? Well, you're you're going to have an event. That's what I'm waiting for. The event for oh, recycling our paints. So. Yes. That one is going to be on Ju in July. Oh, July. July. Yes, oh, July. Okay. I have so, it as June 26th. Yeah. I mean, it'll be coordinated with the trash bash? Like, you, we just add our paint or take our paint or not? No. It's, they're different. They're okay. different events. Okay. okay. That's you know, not July. Do you know it's, what date that one is? Uh, we're still working on getting a, a date set up. Okay. okay. That's what I'm waiting on. I thought it was June 26th. And I had already put it in my calendar. Okay. Well, as soon as I, I get a date, I'll go ahead and, and, and uh, yeah. let you all know. It, yes. It, via Ms. Bernal, if, um, yeah. And that way she'll let us know. Yes. Uh, okay. Very good. Thank you. So I want to introduce Valeria Fonseca, and she's with the Girl Scouts, and she is going to be talking about a project that she is here to present. Very good. Valeria. Good evening, Madam Chair and Committee. There you go. My name is Valeria Fonseca. Que linda, look at her. That's okay. We'll share. We'll share. We'll share. We'll share. We'll share. Thank you. You sure? Okay. You got it? Okay. That's awesome. Bye, Lydia. Can you tell us uh, wh what your rank is and wh what grade you're in? Uh, yes. I will be an incoming senior. Yes. Um, thank you for, for taking your time to listen to my project. I have a proposed project, FAR Eco Project. The P for promoting, H for helping, A awareness, R recycle, R repurpose. E, environmental, C, community, O, operation. I am on my 13th year as a Girl Scout. Currently, wow. I am working on my Gold Award, which is the highest honor any Girl Scout can get. As a Brownie in fourth grade, I earned my Bronze Award by establishing a little free library that currently stands at the Hidalgo County Precinct 2 in San Juan. As a junior in seventh grade, I earned my silver award by making a hundred no sew blankets and a bilingual online tutorial for residents at the San Juan nursing home. Wow. Now looking forward to completing my gold award. Um, a fact about the gold award, I'm very committed to completing my project. In my troop starting out, we had around 15 girls and now including myself, we only have four more left. Four. Yes. <laughs> um, my project goals. I first started, I saw this a while on my trip to Mexico with my family. We were at a park and I had seen this and it was like never seen here. I really like this because it really stood out. I saw a basketball recycling bin and I immediately fell in love with it and the idea of incorporating it into our city parks. I really love this idea because not only can you promote recycling for physical activity too. This will encourage people to exercise by throwing recycling into the basket. People will unconsciously exercise and recycle. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. I will work with community with the, with the community to create a QR code to place on the basketball bin that will give facts about recycling, like the benefits. Very good. Oh my gosh, you're like, a, this is beautiful. <laughs> uh, two locations I had in mind were the Dr. William Long School City Park on the north side of FAR and the Jones Box Park on the south side of FAR. I picked these two because they're the ones that caught my eye the most. I really liked the Dr. William Long School Park because I would like to work together with the school to educate the kids more on recycling. Again, with the school, I would really like to establish a recycling club at the Dr. Long Elementary. 
I would like to partner with NHS students to, to read to elementary students about recycling or any other organizations because I really have a passion for reading. I would like to attend events with the City of Far Recycling, such as Recycled Materials Arts Workshop with Re Us Art. That's, that's mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. The library has always been so great with these events. That was the name of the earlier they were talking about mm -hmm. the recycled art project. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was the name of the company. I currently applied for the Young Texan Ambassador cohort with Keep Texas Beautiful. Are you waiting to hear from them? Mm -hmm. Oh, awesome. Yes. And one of the criteria to being involved with them is to create a project. And I would really like this to help with that. I would really like this to be my project. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. This would also be one of the, the sustainability goals with PSJ. To use resources wisely, use the recycling materials to assist in the PSJ ISD sustainability trash and show, where students use handmade clothing and accessories composed from recyclable items. This would educate sustainability goals with my project. I have a question. Mm -hmm. This uh, trash, trash, and, trash and show? Yes. You Did the district already have one this year? Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. We presented on the that's, 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 that, that, that I, it's like, mm -hmm. And where was that trash and show held? At Southwest High School. High School. Yeah. Okay. Um, Ms. Oliva had been talking about having a community-wide, she, uh, she's passionate about having a community-wide like swap, like instead of selling your clothes, you swap your clothes at some, I'm wondering if like it might work somehow in the future <laughs> with this. I'm just thinking out loud. I'm sorry, how can we help you? Because <laughs> you're just, we've been wanting to start a young text, uh, like a, a, youth, a young ambassador group. And I'm gonna be very honest with you, um, darn COVID. I wish I could say the other word, but I can't. But darn COVID, because before COVID, we had a lot of young, at, young youth helping at our trash bashes. It was beautiful. There'd be, there were so many young, yeah, the youth was were involved in helping and um i know that you're passionate about the girl scouts and 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 this group but there's others that you know were doing it because they needed the hours for nhs or what have you regardless we needed the help right the city needed the help the volunteer help and i'm i'm just delighted i'm delighted that not many people know about the Young Texan Ambassador group with Keep Texas Beautiful. And I'm just delighted that you tapped into that. And I'm praying that you you get you get selected. Thank you. Um, how can we help you make this all possible for you? Yes. Um, I would like to receive some funding um, also with the schools to start off with at least two um like you need help making constructing these yes okay mm -hmm. it's amazing because last year i was talking to the group about putting our young young ambassadors whatever they whoever we could get and i'm i'm just saying and recycling water bottles mm -hmm. at our city events because at our city events water is sold by various groups, along with other beverages. But if we could just tackle and, you know, corral the water bottles, I just thought that would be huge. Mm -hmm. And here you are presenting this. I'm like, got tears in my eyes because um, I'm seeing this happening right now. And it's it's your beautiful idea. And um, so you, you need funding to help you build these. Yes. Obviously you need, probably permission to have these at the schools. And I know these, 
I mean, these two locations are open to the public, right? And I, I see the vision that you have for putting them there. Um, go ahead. I have a question. So are you already working with the recycling center? So there's an agreement that if you build these, that they will service them and take the bottles out? Is there already that agreement in place? Okay. So would, that, would that be something that could happen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And pick them up? Okay. I see. Sure, sure. Because what Mr. Manin is talking about in the past, it's been juice boxes or carton milk cartons. There's so, there's certain items that mm -hmm. that Public Works would, but it was an arrangement. I I understand that. So what about if she if uh, Jones Box Park was one of the ones that she had looked at? If there was a container at Jones Box Park, would the city be able to service that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I do like your idea of a mobile one for events. I, I, I would. I seem yeah, you've got the yeah. Avocado Festival coming up in October. Well, not only that, July. we've got the 4th of July. Uh, we've got a number of, of events that are coming up. And you put our it on scan wheels. code that, I mean, shoot. Be awesome. I don't know if it's a lot for you to do, but maybe design a collapsible one that can then just. Can you, can you design a collapsible one and we'll build it? <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure out someone to build it for you. That's really neat. What do you think? Um, I really like the idea. Um, yes. See, because the city can do their part, but obviously uh, bringing in the school district, which I know we have a sitting board member, wouldn't be a problem, but you have to go through those channels. Um, because, but I love your idea of reading to the kids and, you know, that sure helps with education and giving out information. It's, it's a great partnership. This young lady is, it's amazing. Your ideas are amazing. Very well organized presentation too. Do you know how much have you worked out a budget? Like how much you need to build the pages? I'm still working with the ideas. I haven't completely finished everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. So maybe once once you have that, if you can come back with the committee and then we can. Does that sound good? Yes. Okay. If we came up with a collapsible version for the 4th of July, would you develop a scan code and you, would you like to help us with that? Yeah, I would like to. 4th of July is in two weeks. Oh, shoot. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, Mr. Manning. Can we come up with something quick? Maybe, I'll, maybe this might be the avocado festival is in October. That gives her some time. Okay, I know I'm pushing it. I'm pushing it. I'm no, sorry. We, we could do it for Real Four Station also. We oh, so so again, also. let's so, explain explain to her Real Four Station. Yeah, so the Real Four Station, um, we have that every year. It's around October, and um, so we usually do a, a huge planting festival. You know where we have all the schools from PSJA come. We've been doing it in the within the city of Far, like you know, right outside the city limits out here, like kind of close to the Far Bridge. And they're still going to be like, we're going to do like five acres for the next five years. And it's all going to be here in the state park. So we have like last year, I think we had like over a thousand uh, kids show up. That, that, that's not including like the regular public that came. So that would be that's a so great place for you to have that. Because I, when I saw it, I like right away, I thought of my boys and my boys are like, they, they would see that and they'd be like, oh, they would go look. Just give it to myself. Yeah, they would look. And I think that's like, I think that's one of the best things is that people would actually look like, oh, Hey, well, even look, is it, oh, okay. let me look for more trash, you know, not trash, but, you know, uh, bottles in this case to throw in there. So I think that's a so wonderful we're, idea. We're seeing we a bigger picture. It. Now you're just one, two school, you want two locations. We're seeing a mobile, a mobile, a one, mobile one that can yeah. be kind of moved uh, and used maybe, maybe a couple of mobile ones because our events are large, aren't they? Um, but if you could come back to us with, with um, maybe, um, a, a budget and a design, and then we could work on on the seeing where we can get the funding for you. But I I love your idea. I'm sure. <laughs> it's awesome. Job. Great job. Yes. 
Thank you. It, are you good with that? You have yes. any questions for us? No questions. Yes. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Great Before job. Thank you, you so job. much. God's blessings to you. Wow. Okay. Wow. Um, we're down to item uh, administrative item 2F. Um, any board comments? Anybody? Um, anybody want to add anything? Board comments? Anything? Other than, again, lots of information, lots of great information. Um, happy Father's Day to those guys out there listening. Happy Father's Day. Many blessings. Oh, I, I do have a question, and hopefully the community knows this, but uh, I don't know who takes care of sandbags, but are they still available for people who are worried about their houses flooding? Yes. Oh, it is. Okay. Okay. Ten minutes. And and because <laughs> my husband told me that he went and they were <laughs> yesterday, not today. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then that the location is again. Okay. Okay. So you're out at the EMS parking lot and the DRC. Okay. All right. If you don't want to do that, the other tip that I've always learned is you could topsoil, like you go, go they sell it for a dollar a bag or two dollars a bag. You know, go get that at your local hardware yeah. store or whatever, or in HEB, and you keep the topsoil there. You use that as your, instead of your sandbags. And then when you're done at the end of the season, hurricane season ends in November, you use it in your yard. Yeah, good idea. Okay, good. <laughs> and that way you don't have to wait in line. You don't have to bag it yourself. You already have them ready. There you go. So there's no board comments? We're good. Okay. Uh, then I need a motion on the floor then to adjourn this meeting. I, I motion to adjourn the okay, meeting. Okay. Second. Ms. Oliva, Ms. De La Garza seconds. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. No, no one's in opposition, so this meeting is adjourned. God bless you all. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Stay safe.